Hello and welcome to Backstage Buzz, where you get the inside story from some of the great programming happening at the MAC, right from the directors and creators of the shows. I'm Diana Martinez, and we have another wonderful episode lined up for today. Later on, I'll speak with two cast members from the hilarious political review, Capital Steps. This show is a crowd favorite, featuring song parodies and original sketches that satirize current headlines in today's top news stories. Then, Steve Scott, director of Buffalo Theatre Ensemble's next show, Outside Mullinger, will join us to share his plans for the production. But first, a special treat. We went behind the scenes with Lee Kesselman during Music Fridays at noon. The free weekly performance series hosted by the COD Music Department. We visited during the mid-semester student recital, and then we chatted with Lee about upcoming college music events. Let's take a look. For, for people who have never come to one, I really want them to understand what this is all about. Can you explain to someone who's never been what they could expect? Sure. We decided that it was really important for our music students to, to understand some of the things that happen in the music world besides the classroom itself. So we set up this program of every Friday at noon during the regular semesters, we would have something that, that some program that deals with music. We hold it in a classroom, we try to keep it fairly informal and we have events every Friday. And what we found is that the community and the college community and the students themselves have found this to be a place to be on Fridays at noon. And so sometimes we have students performing, sometimes we have faculty performing, sometimes we have special guests who come and they either talk about the careers in music or the music business. And uh, sometimes we, we, uh, uh, we bring in something completely out of out of all of those categories. Uh, so guests and faculty and students, and among all those things, we get a broader picture of what the music world is about. So sometimes we'll show a film, and sometimes we'll have someone come and talk about music therapy as a career. Um, our, some of our most special programs are when our students perform. We love that. And I've been to a couple where you've had alumni come back, and what's great, I thought, was then the students get to see, like, I could be that one day. That's you know? right. The, the alumni programs are also very special. Sometimes that's the time we really connect with our alumni and find out what they're doing. But for students at a community college, it can be really hard to see what the future looks like. It feels like, oh, that career is so far away. I'm a freshman in music theory class. And, how does this actually happen? And when our alumni can come back and say, I was in your chair one day, I was singing in that choir, or I was playing in that band, and then I went to some other school and I got a degree, and now I have a career in music, that just opens the whole world. Not only for our students, but also for the faculty to, to reconnect, and for community members who see the continuum from first year freshman through transferring to another school to possibly having a career in music. So, you know, I remember a couple weeks ago you had um, a quintet here, Metropolis Quintet, and it was an oboe and cello, I think, and violin right. and bass. And, and I think it's important for students, faculty, and parents and others to see. I think when people think you're going to be a music major, you're going to be a singer or a performer, the end, or a teacher. Right. There are so many opportunities. You can compose, you can be a studio musician, you can teach, you can be a private teacher, you can organize orchestras. I think that is another value to this program, is for people to realize how rich and deep. I, I agree with you. I you think know. one of the hardest things for students who are beginning their studies in music is to really get a picture for what this life might look like. Mm -hmm. And they've, maybe they've played in the high school band or the high school orchestra or sang in the high school choir. But that's such a small subset of right. what can really happen. So when we bring guests off and they perform or they might do a contemporary work or a new work so we get some insights for the com about the composer, um, when that happens, it opens a whole bunch of questions. And I find the days after we do that, my students are coming to me saying, so this Metropolis Oboe Quartet was here. How does that happen? Who are those people? Or you wrote this piece, mm -hmm. because they did a piece right. of mine, you wrote this piece for oboe and three strings, and what does that score look like? Can we, can we get a recording of that? And all of a sudden now we're talking about a whole bunch of other questions. And 
Who do you have coming up this the rest of the season that, that maybe you would want to point out? Like, hey, really look at this one. Well, we, we have, the programs vary so much. I'm going to go quickly through the ones okay. that we have. That on April 6th, we've got the movie Copying Beethoven with Ed Harris. It's a feature-length film, but it gives great insights as to a great historical figure. And we put that on that week because the New Philharmonic is doing all the Beethoven piano concertos that weekend. And we thought, if you're interested in Beethoven, maybe you'll come watch the movie, That's which awesome. is a, a terrific movie. Uh, the week after that, my son, Robin Kesselman, who's a professional string bass player, is doing a whole recital of music for string bass. He'll be accompanied by Bill Burr, one of our staff pianists. And so that'll be a performance. He may talk a little bit, but he may just he may just play and since he grew up in this area and he went on to a professional music career that will have its own level of interest in that way. Um, that's the 13th of April. On the 20th we have a guest pianist who's been here before and she's going to play music written by Jewish and partially Jewish composers particularly during the time of World War II and the time oh, wow. before World War II and she has a whole a whole thing she does in talking about what it would have been like to be a Jewish musician in Europe during the Nazi years. And so, wow. so at, then later that afternoon, she's doing a master class with our piano students, which is very exciting uh, to bring someone on who's going to be able to fulfill both yeah. of those roles. And then the last weekend in April is a student recital. Uh, we do three of those every semester, one in the middle and two at the end. So. Uh, that's April, May we have um, Lindsay Kesselman, my other child. It's not <laughs> always like this, but it, it is this time. Um, and she's doing a whole concert of works that I've written for her, for voice and piano nice. and cello. And so that will be um, the week that she's performing with the DuPage Chorale as a soloist, and she'll do a voice master class while she's here as well. And then the final week of the semester is a recital. We try, if we can, to incorporate those events that also attach to other musical events that are happening. If we bring a soprano soloist to sing with the DuPage Chorale, why would we not use her for a right, chamber music right. program and do a master class? And Carolyn Anger, who's the pianist who's coming in, in early uh, um, April, is coming to do a master class and to do this recital. And again, it's a way to enrich what happens in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And in the field of music especially, and I think in all the arts, what happens in the classroom is a really important component, but it's only one component of what right. goes on. I think for these young artists to be exposed to composers and artists, they're learning to find their voice. They're learning to create and make their mark. And that's really how, you don't get famous always singing somebody else's work. You that's gotta right. create your own work. That's right, and even the sense of what everybody else is doing in the field. There are mm -hmm. composers and there are performers and there are educators and there are music therapists. And, and all of that gives a picture that helps someone not only find their voice, but figure out where they might fit in. Right. I find it really fascinating that we have so many people who come each week. We, we, we range somewhere between 30 and even as many as 150 50 people have come to these sessions and we're a project that is really jointly sponsored by both the performance wing and the educational wing and that teaches our students something else about how this world of the arts works is that we do collaborate, we do talk to each other, and we find a way to, to make use of the resources that are around in a creative way. We started this whole series because we were on West Campus while the MAC was being renovated. Oh. And we realized that a lot of people forgot we had a music program or we weren't as visible as we usually are. So we thought, well, we should do something. And we started with, I think, three sessions that first semester. And then people started coming. And so the next thing was, well, we'll have seven or eight. And then it was, I guess we better do this every week so that people it's know awesome. there's something going on. And it's become a wonderful new tradition for the Mac. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you. And thanks for letting us come backstage and see one. My pleasure. I urge you to come visit us at one of these Music Friday events on Fridays at noon at the Mac and the Chart Center. For more information, visit atthemac.org. And on the homepage, look for the box that says Music Fridays. We hope to see you soon. <laughs> on Sunday, May 6th, don't miss the DuPage Corral Spring Concert. The DuPage Community Band will perform on Monday, May 7th. On Tuesday, May 8th, don't miss COD's Chamber Orchestra. 
The percussion ensemble will take the stage on Wednesday, May 9th. On Thursday, May 10th, stop by the Mac at 2 p.m. to see the guitar ensemble perform, and then come back at 7.30 to see the chamber singers and concert choir concert. Finally, be sure to visit the MAC to see the Student Jazz Showcase on Friday, May 11th. For tickets, visit atthemac.org or you can call 630-942-4000. The Capitol Steps are a fan favorite at the MAC and they are back by popular demand on May 12th. I am so happy to welcome two cast members, Nancy Dolliver and Morgan Duncan. And they're going to give us an idea about what it takes to prepare this hilarious satirical sketch comedy show. Welcome. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So we were talking before, mm -hmm. and you were telling me that the show is all scripted. It, they're song parodies, right? so yeah, they, can, they, they have to kind of be prepared beforehand. We, we wish we which were talented I, which, enough which, to make that happen. <laughs> I thought it came all out of the top no, of your head. No, no, no. No, no, I thought that the cast of each show wrote their own show, much like Second City, where this product is a lot more managed and it's actually really scripted by head writers. Absolutely, yeah. One of the, actually one of our founders, uh, one of the folks who started the show, uh, was it 36 years ago? Can you believe? Elena yeah. Newport. Yeah, still still writes uh, a really? lot of the material, which is fantastic, you know. And she yeah, was a staffer? Was she one of the yes, staffers? Yes, she was, for Chuck Percy and they were asked to write some parody songs for a party uh -huh. and they thought they'd be asked to either stop or they'd get fired and instead they were like, oh, do it again. Yeah. And like most things in Washington, it spun completely out of control and here we are 36 years later, so. Well, I think, you know, when we, we do this show every year mm -hmm. and, and I have brought it back every year since I've been here and it's like our fifth, our fifth season in a row and um, there is something that I think Capital Steps does that comedians don't do, that Second City doesn't do, and they are very careful to balance. Yeah. And I think that you guys are, are your writers do a really good job of balancing, not offending, right. but yet having a great time. Right, right. We, we like to say that we're equal opportunity offenders. Yeah, we'll, uh -huh. we'll kick anybody when they're down, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but you know, there's some shows that are just an attack sure. on one side, and, no. and I think that there's a level of sophistication in the writing of Capital Steps that's smart enough to know how far you can go, when it's when it's time, sure. when it's too soon. Right. That's another reason for the scripted element. Which is smart. That, yeah, when you say things off the top of your head, you don't always say what you meant to say or right. wish you had said. Yeah. So Exactly. But there is an organic uh, nature to the show as well that because it is changing all the time as things change and things get thrown in here and there and different cast members bring different things to the show. So. It's, it's, it does have a little of that organic element to it, which is part of the fun, I think. How long have, how long does the show go before it's, like how often is it evolving? How the show that? changes pretty regularly, like every week. There's oh. a little, there's a little bit, something drops in, something Got it. falls out. It's a sort of an incremental thing rather than let's do a new show. Yeah. It's like, well this Constantly element. Constantly evolving. This, yes, this, this isn't really in the news anymore, so that's gonna drop out and let's make a little tweak to this because now it's a little different. Oh. Let's put in a whole new song because now there's a new element to this. So there's, it's always sort of always responding. Evolving. Yeah, I love we're pretty that. connected to the news cycle, so you know when something. So it changes every hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like that these days. It does, yeah, there, it? yeah. I mean, there are times when we thought, oh, well, this is we'll be singing this song forever, and then there's something new the next day. So. Or sometimes we've rushed something into the show, and then we find that everybody else didn't hear about it yet. Yeah. So. It's you know, crazy. It yeah. is crazy, but it's a great um, company too for an actor. You get to play a lot of different roles, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. It, I think that's really fun. I enjoy that. You know, you I come off as Kellyanne Conway and throw off that wig and put on another wig, and three minutes later, I'm Nancy Pelosi. Mm. That's really fun. That is really fun. <laughs> I could see your Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> I really. <laughs> I like it. I like it. 
So you are here, um, and and you're doing a show in Skokie, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and we're pre-taping this, everybody. <laughs> and then, we, are you guys coming back, or are you not sure yet? Will you? We be don't really cast? know. Yeah, we don't know this far in, the, in advance. We'll be. Um, so the cast changes for each company as well. Are That's you correct. a company that always works together, for instance? Yeah. Or no. So you never know who's in your in your. Cast. Well, we know about a month in advance, but you know. It, okay. it does change quite a bit, and that that also brings a spontane, spontaneous element to the yeah. performances, that uh, that's that's fun and keeps it fresh. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? This is my sixteenth year with the Capital Steps. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Do yeah. you do other projects or just can you can you do other We're, projects? During an election year like this one, uh -huh. um, we may be on the road half the year, 150 days, so it's really hard to do other projects. Yeah. It's really tough. 150 um, days a year. Yeah. All over the U.S.? All over the country, and occasionally out of it. Yeah. But uh, but mostly, yeah, all, of, all 50 states we've done. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it is. It's really fun. And so 16 years, you said? 16 for me. Wow. And how about you? About 20. Well, you can't so beat a job like this. It's a pretty good job. <laughs> pretty good and good. where are you guys based out of? Washington, Washington D.C. Oh, you are out of Washington. Yeah. yeah. And where do you rehearse? At the Ronald Reagan Building, which is our home base, yeah. and out on the road because that's where sometimes you get a, you know, an, it used to be a fax, now it's an email. <laughs> oh, can you get this in tonight or yeah. rehearse this tonight and put it in tomorrow night? And so. And have you guys played for any of the senators or characters that you perform? A, that a you, lot. That you do? Yeah, it happens a lot. And um, they're, they're always really good sports about it. Good. Yeah, yeah. And but it is a little a little daunting when, you I know, bet. I did do Nancy Pelosi one night. In front of Nancy Pelosi? She was the speaker, and then she sat down in the front row. Oh, no. And I just thought, oh. But, you know, they're all really good yeah. sports, and some of them have even complained if we don't. Yeah, we get... But well, I'm not important enough to be in the show. What happened? Yeah. Oh, really? And, and in fact, there's. If I could tell a little yes, story, we, uh, we we do, we went to the White House to do a performance during uh, George Bush Senior's term, uh -huh. and they were very nervous. As of course, there's always scandals in Washington. And they were, and his staff was very nervous about what we were going to do. So they asked us to please not do anything about the president. And we did the show and he came up on stage after and said, what, I'm not important enough to be in the show? And There's no songs about me. <laughs> you know, he, he's a good sport. He was a great, and so we did. They, they they did said, the well, songs. we do have oh, some did songs yeah. about you if you're okay with that. And yeah. he said, I'm okay with that. And so they did them. Yeah, no and he way. loved it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very good sport because yeah. he'll make fun of himself. And yeah. he, I, I think he's great. And his wife would make fun of him. And yeah. I thought, yeah. It's fun when they're a good sport. Yeah, yeah. You know? exactly. Yeah, they were really good about it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So after the show, you did more songs for him? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, what are you guys working on now? Like, what's the new, what's the new, you can't say. No, 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 <laughs> you, you know, really, just turn on turn on the news, and that's pretty Whatever, much, that's what, what, you're that's on. Pretty much <laughs> what we're dealing with. Yeah, I mean. How do you keep up? It's really tricky these days. I bet. It's really tricky. There's something every day. Yeah, I mean, and things that we th that 10 years ago would have been bombshells are now just, ah, well, that's just today. Sometimes you, even they'll change something and they'll just send the information to one of the cast members. Oh, add this. And then you're on stage and you're like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. No, that's new. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is I think about, like, when I was young, right, you, you knew who the president was, right. for the most part, and the vice president, sure. and you knew a few of the characters yeah. around, the, yeah. the, you know, but now it's like, we know who the FBI director is, we know who That's the true. chief of staff sure. is, we, it just seems like, I don't know if it's social media or the news, or, but I, I'm trying to think of a time in my life where I knew so many different players in Congress. Well, we or do in some shows in Washington for uh, teenagers that are visiting there with various programs. And the, these are usually high school kids. And they're pretty smart audiences. I you bet. can tell by the reactions who they like and who they don't like. And who they, they have, know. Yeah. They know right. all these people. Yeah, they know Crazy. them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for making the time to come and talk with us. And I, I am hoping you guys are in our cast that comes out. I oh, hope so thank too. you. Thank you nice so much. Back. All the best. Thank you. Break Thanks for life. having us. Thank you. The Capitol Steps will be at the MAC on Saturday, May 12th. Tickets can be purchased in person at the box office or online at atthemac.org, or you can call 630-942-4000. <laughs>
currently on display in the Cleve Carney Art Gallery through May 10th is the annual Juried Student Art Exhibit. Please be sure to stop by the gallery to enjoy the impressive talents of our students as they exhibit work which spans a variety of media and techniques being taught in the COD classrooms. Local artists, don't miss your chance to submit work for this year's Community Art Show. Applications for one, the annual Emerging Artist Exhibit, will be accepted until April 22nd. For more information, to submit your artwork or for consideration, visit clevecarneygallery.org. I am so pleased to welcome our next guest to the show, who is the director of Outside Mullinger, the play that will close out the Buffalo Theater Ensemble's 1718 season. Steve Scott is an incredibly accomplished artist who has won multiple Jeff Awards and is also part of the Artistic Collective at the Goodman Theater, where he has overseen over 200 productions. We're so lucky to have him here on our show. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Diane. It's nice to be here. Nice to have you. So, Steve, I want to I want to share a little bit about what we are talking about. You have been at the Goodman for how many years? Since 1980. It's so, a, a lifetime and a half. Basically. A lifetime and yeah. a half, which is amazing to hold such an important and big position for so many years. Well, and 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 it's been a fascinating time watching the Goodman Theater grow from what was kind of just another regional theater to one of the really great theaters in America. And it's been very exciting to be part of all of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're bringing all of that with you here. Yes. Uh, I, my car is laden with, with, with uh, Goodman things. Yes. And it's given me great experience that I kind of carry into whatever project I'm doing. You yeah. always take your talent with you, as someone yeah. told me. They yeah. said, do you know what? When you get sad about leaving a project, remember, you take it all with you. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, we, you're, you're the producer of all these shows at the Goodman. Mm -hmm. You still consult with Robert Falls. Mm -hmm. What brings you to BTE? I love working at BTE. I think the, uh, I love getting out of the city, which wow. is nice. Uh, I think the audiences here are great. Uh, I think the artists that are part of the company at BTE are wonderful. I think Connie does a wonderful job in organizing all of this. It's a very professionally run company. Uh, and it's one of those places where a director feels very supported by the institution. Uh, and they all, always offer me great shows to do, including Outside Mullinger. So what, what is it about Outside Mullinger that attracts you to the show? Um, the characters, basically. Okay. Um, it's a fascinating, it, it's kind of like a little contemporary fable that John Patrick Shanley wrote about uh, two houses side by side out in the countryside in, in Ireland and the relationship of the two families that, that, that uh, reside there focusing on the younger generation. Uh, a, a man who has grown up in the house next door to a woman who's grown up in the other house and their kind of complicated feelings for each other and their kind of unexpressed feelings for each other. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely kind of contemporary love story, if I'm not giving too much away. That's good though, because we want to intrigue people to come, yeah, right? Yeah, so it, it, it's really lovely. I mean, it's, the, 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 uh, Shanley's language is always wonderful, but these, these Characters are so unusual and yet recognizable because we've all had the feelings that they have. We just haven't been in the situation that they're in. And watching all of this kind of come together and evolve and all of that is just kind of fascinating. So uh, how, when do you start rehearsing? Uh, we start rehearsing on April 4th. So about a week and a half from now. So now, have you, how long do you take to prepare for your show? It depends on the show that I'm doing. You know, if there's a lot of stuff that I have to learn about whatever is going on or, or you know, a lot of historical research. For this show, I have been working, I guess, about three months working with designers, uh, working, the, the show is largely cast uh, through the company. Uh, just and reading the play, there's not a there's not a lot of research that I have to do for it because it's kind of all there. But having been a producer mm -hmm. for all these years, um, I would imagine you are approaching this show very differently than your yeah. typical director, right? Your typical typical director is worrying about his rehearsal and his e process. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, t for others who aren't aware of what does a producer do? Oh wow! How do you think that colors how you direct? Uh, it, it covers a, a lot, because uh, basically the producer is the one who is responsible for making the project happen, 
in the time that you've got, with the money that you've got, with the talent that you can find. Uh, and I think because I've been doing that for so long, I have an understanding of what this project means to this theater. And I don't, you know, I don't want to go in and make demands that will close the theater if the production doesn't go well. So I want to work within what the, uh, the, the guidelines that the company has. And I think mm -hmm. I'm very good about that, about understanding, you know, what are the restrictions, what are the, what are the challenges here, uh, what are the things that we can change, what are the things we can't change, and then figuring out how to make that happen. Yeah. Now, do you have a lot of discussions with the designers? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm working with a, a young woman uh, uh, who is designing the set, uh, Pauline, and she is... Uh, really lovely, but I've never worked with her before. Sure. And she has done lots of research. She's done a lot of the research that I normally would have done uh -huh. into uh, the, the area of Ireland in which th this takes place and the countryside and what, you know, what's there and what the buildings look like and all of that stuff. So we've been working off and on for, for several months just kind of looking through pictures of, of the area and how those pictures translate to what is needed for this show and also then, because this, the stage is smallish and there are several sets, how does that work? Right. You know, how can we fit all of that stuff onto our stage? It's been very exciting and she's come up with some lovely ideas. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, it's been fun. So if someone was going to go see the show, what do you want them to take away? I think the show is about possibility. Ah. It's about no matter you know, and, and I think it's something we all need right now. Um, you, you may feel that you've kind of hit the end point, that your life is what it's going to be or whatever. But there's always something that can happen that will give you a, a, a new look, a new start, a, a, a new way of embracing life. And I think that's a, that's a good thing for all of us to see. I think it's true, though. I think you can reinvent yourself at any oh, yeah, age. I yeah. really do believe that. You just have to let, let the world in. And, and recognize what you need, mm -hmm. uh, which is harder to do as we get older, I think. So, uh, so it's a very hopeful show. Uh, and I think hope is a commodity that is important for us right now. It is. It yeah. is. I think we always need hope. Oh, always. Always, always need hope. Yeah. And, but especially in an atmosphere where everything is kind of divided and people are tense right. and nobody knows what to do. We will see our, way, our ways through this eventually. And I believe, you know, that's the most magical part of theater. Yes. Is can you bring people together? Is this the place? We were just talking about this in a meeting, and I said, you know, with so much divide, who do we want to be right now? Mm -hmm. who, who do we want to be? Do we want to be the place where people can come together and get a new perspective and talk and find some common ground, or do we constantly need to make a statement? Exactly. How can we... How can we create a place yeah. here in the arts where people can come together? Well, the commodity that we have in the theater that, that nobody else has much is empathy. You go to the theater so you know what it's like to sit in somebody else's seat, uh, to uh, be in somebody else's shoes. Uh, and I think that's very important now because I think that's something that our society is forgetting. You know, right. We're so focused on what I want and what I think I sometimes forget to understand what you want and what you need and how we can find a common ground there. And that's what the theater does uh, in, in a very first person way, which is exciting. Well, thank you for coming, Steve. And I so look forward to seeing your show. We're so lucky to have you here with us directing this show. Oh, well, thank you, Diana. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Outside Mullinger will run May 3rd through June 3rd in the Playhouse Theater. For tickets or more information, call the box office at 630-942-4000 or visit atthemac.org. That's all the time we have for today, but be sure to tune in next month for even more behind-the-scenes interviews. I'm Diana Martinez, and thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the theater and next time on Backstage Buzz.